All right, good morning once again. So let's go ahead and discuss the seventh module in Computer Programming 11B. So for today, we will actually try to focus ourselves with the review ng mga concepts natin ng object-oriented programming from midterms up to the last week. So nakafocus talaga tung 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 module natin sa mga programming problems, and I'm gonna show you how to at least solve them. So we have here the very first problem that we need to solve which is actually the pain calculator problem. Now, uh, let's try to anal analyze a problem. Assume that a gallon of paint, meron kang isang gallon ng paint, yan, it can cover about 350 square feet of wall space. But then, you have to create an application with a main method that prompts the user for the length, the width, and the height of a rectangular room. So, according here to the problem, you have to need, or you need to pass the three different values of length, width, and height to a specific method that will simply do the following. So it can calculate the wall area. It can also pass the calculated wall area to another method. And it will display the number of gallons needed. And it will also compute the price based on a paint price of $32 per gallon. Uh, it will also need you to return the price to the main method. So save natin yan as paint calculator the Java. So let's go ahead and open our IntelliJ and create a class named Paint Calculator the Java. So we'll put it here. So Paint Calculator the Java. Natin. Uh, try natin to analyze this. No, we'll solve it one by one. So since I want uh, the program to input something, import muna natin si package natin dito na util that scanner. Then let's create here the public class Paint Calculator, and of course the main method that we have. Okay. Uh, according to the problem, we de de we don't really need to at least be complicated than this one. Uh, length with height lang, tapos methods lang naman ang kailangan. So therefore, uh, meron tayo ditong, of course, yung assume natin na si create na variable na may 350 feet. For paint square lang yan, for the meantime. Yan. We will have here double length, the width, and the height. Yan. And of course, si scanner natin. So uh, SC is equal to new scanner system. Oops. System dot in. All right. So let's ask the user to input. Enter length. Yan. So enter length. Gawin natin dito is pass natin yung value niyan kay length is equal to SC that next double since double yung kailangan natin. Let's let's copy and paste this one. Enter length. We have here width and width and we have here height. Very easy, di ba? Ayan. So according here, we need to pass the three values to a specific method. So pwede tayong gumawa dito ng method na that will calculate the area, di ba? So we have double area is equal to compute area. Gagawa tayo na pa bagong method with the following parameters. Width and the height itself. So using the new method that we have created here, let's try to create here a public static. Hindi siya void kasi we need to return a specific value but rather double. Yeah. Tapos we have here double length, double width, and double height. So, calculate na natin yung area natin. So, double area is equal to the length. Tama ba? Or, let's say width na lang. Width multiplied by the height. Yan, area. Tapos, i-print natin. System.out.println uh, The wall of the area. Wall of the area is uh, yung area mismo. Tapos, i-return natin yung area. Diba? So, it will pass the calculated wall area yan, and returns the number of gallons. Ito, returns the number of gallons. For the number of gallons here, we, we, we can just simply create another yan, another variable inside the main method that will compute the price. Ayan. It will compute the price based on a paint price of $32 per gallon. So, meron ka ditong compute gallons. 
which is area. Tapos, we have public, static, uh, not void, but rather double ulit, compute gallons. This time, we have here double area. So, kung ano man yung naging result nito ni area na pinaform natin dito, it will automatically be passed inside another method, which is the compute gallons method. Okay? Now, for the compute gallons method, we have here a variable, the how many gallons we need. So, per area, yan, per, per area, we need at least one gallon. Diba? Tapos, iprint natin, system, that out, that print line, you will need, and gallons need, plus gallons. So, how many gallons do we need? Depende kung ano yung magiging uh, area natin. Tapos, let's compute the price. So, double price of the gallon is equal to the gallons need multiplied by the 32. According here, $32 per gallon. Diba? So, multiply by 32. And let's return the price itself. Tapos, dito ngayon, <clears throat> uh, it will simply display the final price. Okay? Tapos, and for example, 15 by 20 with 10 foot ceilings is $64. So, tignan natin dito, system, that out, the print line, i-print natin yung presyo. The price to paint the room is plus the price in dollars. In dollars. Okay. So, let's see if this is working. Gamitin natin yung example dito, no? yung 15. So, 15 feet. So, width niya 20. 10 yung height niya. Price to paint the room is $64.0. So, tama, no? Uh, this program is actually very easy kung napansin natin. Diba? Uh, we only needed to create uh, methods in this case. So, do you have any questions so far? So, make sure to at least uh, copy my code on how I have written them. Diba? One by one. Alright, so let's proceed with the second problem here. So as you can see, we have 2A and 2B. And for the 2A, we need to create a class named Lease with fields that hold an apartment tenant's name. So name, apartment number, monthly rent amount, and term of the lease in months. So we have to include a constructor that initializes the name to XXX, the apartment number to 0, the rent to 1000, and the term to 12. Yan. So, meron din tayo dito method to get and set each of the fields. So, may get set na tayo dito. Include a non-static method named add pet fee that adds $10 to the monthly rent value and calls a static method named explain pet policy. So, isa-isahin muna natin to, no? So, save the class as least at Java. So, let's create here a package. Uh, siguro yung package depende kung ano yung magiging pangalan, no? Uh, in my case, I'll name that as lease. Ayan. As lease problem. Ito. Nakikita nyo sa screen ko. And inside the lease problem here, we have the lease.java and the test lease.java. So, please make sure to create them ng maaga para hindi na tayo mahirapan. Okay? Okay. So, we have here two different Java files. Test lease and this. Pero sa lease muna ang gagawin natin. Okay? So, first of all, I'll put it in a package. Uh, depende ko ano yung package name na ginawa nyo. Ayan. It's important po na lagyan nyo ng package especially kapag ka nilalagyan nyo sa folder para if in case na maulit yung mga mga class names ninyo tapos nakalagay naman siya sa ibang package magiging okay lang siya, magiging valid siya kasi nakaseparate naman yung package mo. Alright? So we have public class lease. Ayan. So inside the lease here meron tayong name, apartment number, monthly rent and term of the lease and so on. So, gawin muna natin sila. We have a private because we want we want these variables to be accessed inside this class only. And we have here the ap apartment number. We also have here the rent, double rent. Uh, what else? Yung term, no? Include, I mean, and term in least in months. So, this is private in term. Okay. Now, uh, we also have here a 
according here, add pet fee that adds $10 to the monthly rent. I-gagawin natin yun mamaya, yung pet fee na yan. Pero, i-declare na rin natin yung variable as soon as possible. So, we have here private static final. This is actually a static, di ba? Hindi siya nagbabago. V of 10. There you go. We have to include a constructor first. Tapos, a methods. Yung mga get set methods natin. Yan. So, gawa tayo dito ng constructor na lease. That will simply set the name to xxx. The apartment number to zero. Tama naman na sa public lease. So, this should be ganyan. Uh, what else? Uh, the rent. Yan. Uh, which is actually 1,000. The term, which is 12, di ba? According here. And let's proceed to create the set get method. First of all, uh, si set get, set get method kasi natin, meron tayo yung mga uh, data fields sa to, di ba? So basically, this is your class. And inside this class lease, you have the following properties. Name, apartment number, rent, and term. So each data field is here. Gagawa natin yun ng set get method. So we have here first the public void set name. Okay. And let's name that as tenant, for example. And for this one, whatever the value of the name initially, yan, yung xxx na yan, will now be referenced to itself and will now get the value of the tenant. So yung pinas natin dito na, na value natin. For, dito sa main method kasi maglalagay tayo dito ng, ng set name method in which, of course, including, including a certain value. Pero for now, xxx muna ang initial value natin. Let's also create here the public void set apartment number. Yan. Si set apartment number, we have here an int apt. Tapos, we have this, that apartment number is equal to apt. Reference to itself for the meantime. We need to create another set method here, set rent, which is int the month rent, month rent natin. Yan. Month rent this dot uh, rent equals month rent. Tama na. We also have here the term public void set term in which ano yung ano natin? This is integer int this dot term is equal to t. And so gawa na, gawa na rin tayo dito ng ng mga get methods natin. So, for the get methods, we have public void get name, and that will simply return whatever the value of the name. Same goes through with not void pala. This is string. <laughs> yeah, public string. Next is for us to create here the public int get app number return app number. Okay. So, madali lang, no? Kung baga, yan lang yung kailangan sa problem, eh. So, yun lang yung susundan natin. App number, month rent. Yung month rent natin, is it double? Yeah, yung rent natin is double. So, this should be double. Double. So, pub public double month rent or get get rent na lang Ayan. return rent easy and lastly we have the term public ano yung term natin int diba public int get term let's return the term itself now according here you had you have to add a pet fee add pet fee method that adds the Ten dollars to the monthly rent. So, gawa tayo dito ng public void add pet fee na method in which will simply add to the monthly rent natin. So, meron tayong double new rent. May bago kang value na rent in which yung rent natin will now be added to the fee. Yung fee natin as of the moment is ten. Diba? Initially. So, gawa tayo dito ng Ayan. 
So, magka plus fee ka later on. Now, uh, you also need to create a, a static method name explain pet policy that explains the pet fee. So, yung pet fee, you need to call here another method in which we call explain pet policy that will simply explain the pet policy. Diba? Kumpara saan yan. Public, static, void, explain pet policy, and there you go. So, dito, may system.out.println ka lang naman na nakalagay dito is the I mean, a pet fee of $10 is added to the monthly rent. Yun. Easy. Diba? So, very easy lang naman. So far, so good. Uh, hindi pa ito gagana kasi wala pa namang main method. Pero at least we were able to set the, the class itself and their corresponding data fields and properties. And the question so far? So, in order for this to, or, or in order for this program to at least work, let's proceed to the second problem here, the 2B, which is that we'll simply create a class named test lease. Si test lease, the main method will now declare four lease objects. We will also be calling a get data method three times. And within the method, prompt a user for values for each field for a lease and return a lease object to the main method where it is assigned to one main's lease objects. So do not prompt the user for values for the fourth lease object but let it continue to hold the default values. Then in the main method, pass one of the lease each objects to a show values method that displays the data then call the add pet fee method using the pass lease objects and confirm that the, that the fee explanation statement is, is displayed. Next, we call the show values method for the lease object again and confirm that the pet fee has been added to the rent. Tatawagin natin to. Diba? And finally, call the show values method with each of the other fees objects and confirm that the two hold the values you supplied as input and one holds the constructor default values. So, ito yung default values natin. And that is the test, le test lease, the Java. Isa-isay natin yan, syempre. I know, hindi natin naintindi yung pinagsasabi ko kanina, di ba? Kasi nga, mabilis kong binasa. Pero, gagawin natin yan. Explain natin yung isa-isa. Alright, so first of all, yan, test list at Java tayo muna. Uh, since meron yung input, uh, lagay muna pala natin yan sa list problem natin. Teka, ilipat ko na lang dito para mas makita nyo. Yan, sa gitna ng screen natin. So, package, list problem. Uh, let's also add here an input import java the util if you want to convert this into buffered reader or you know j option pane mas okay so public static void main string args okay hmm ah wala pa pala akong class no diba yan public class test list kahit ako nakakalimutan ko no? ayan public static void main so according here Declare for lease objects. So, magde-declare tayo ng for lease object, meaning we will be calling the lease.java program here earlier. So, we have, we need to instantiate new lease. Tapos, we have here two. We have here three. We have here four. Okay. So, call a get data method three times. Okay. So, may one is equal to get data. Yung get data na yan, titingnan natin kung ano yung magiging laman yan, no? So, 1, get data. 2 is equal to get data. 3 is equal to get data. And, according here, uh, 3 times lang eh, so yung 4 wala, no? So, within the method, prompt a user for values for each field for a list. So, meron ka ditong uh, prompt. Pag sinabi nating prompt, ibig sabihin, uh, you need to create a get data method here that will actually perform that. And so return a list object to the main method. So titingnan natin niya kung paano 'yan gagawin. So for the meantime, gawin gawin muna natin to si public static, gamitin natin si list natin, get data. So the the return type here is actually list. So whatever na ginawa natin dito sa may list.java natin. Kasi we instantiated that eh. Diba? It's actually safe to use. 
already. So, we need to create a prompt. So, first of all, gawa, instantiate ko muna ulit si Liz natin. Uh, mali yung spelling ko. Okay. So, string name for the name. Uh, in apartment number. We have here the double rent. We also have here the in term. And of course, the scanner. Scanner SC is equal to new. Scanner system. Oops. System.in. Okay. Next. After ni scanner, meron naman tayo ditong yung prompt natin for each. Di ba? So, system.out.println. Uh, enter tenant name. Ayan. Lagyan natin yung kay name. Is equal to sc. That next line. Ibato natin yan dito kay lsc.set name. We'd have with a value of name. So, tatawagin natin si set name na ginawa natin dito. Uh, saan yun? Ito. Which will simply get the value of whatever we actually try to input as well. Alright, so far so good. Gawin natin ulit si tenant name. Pero this time, apartment. Apartment number. Ayan. So, the name here should be app number. And this time, hindi set name, but rather set apartment number with a value of apartment number. So, medyo may muli ako dito. This should be, this should not be next line. Kasi ano siya, di ba? Int. So, next int dapat ito. Yan. What else? May error pa ba tayo? Ito. Ah, yeah. Re missing return statement for now. Next, uh, after apartment number, just simply the rent lang. Enter rent. So, we have here rent. This should be next double. Ayan. And this should be set rent with rent itself. Ayan. So, each field for a lease, no? So, ayan, nag nagpa-prompt tayo. And we will return the lease object. Mamaya yan. So, gawin muna natin si, ano yung last dito? Term. Enter term. This should be term. Si term natin is int. So, this should be next int as well. Tapos, this should be term. <coughs> set rent, set term. Ayan. So, far so good. And, let's return LSE. So, kapag katinawag natin itong si get data dito, one will eventually get the value of whatever we have inputted here. Diba? Kaya nga, i-return natin yun dito. So, si one will now contain this. And So, do not prompt the user for values for the fourth least object, but let it continue to hold the default values. Now, for the, for the fourth object, we will try to, you know, uh, hold the default value which is this one. So, mamaya yun natin yun yun yun. Let it continue. Then, in the main method, pass one of the least objects to show value. So, ipakita natin yung show value dito. We have here show values na method. Ipapass natin yan. For example, dito kay 1. Gawin natin si public static void show values least ls Yan. Tapos, pakita natin yung values nyo. System.out to print line. Oops. Backslash n, backslash n. Your lease results. Plus, backslash, oops. Backslash n muna natin dito. This should be name. Oops. Create tayo ng tab dito para mas maganda yung itsura. Uh, plus, let's get the name. ls.getName plus ano yung susunod? Apartment. And for the apartment, isayin pa natin to para mas 
ls.get apartment number plus backslash n rent oops mali 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 ba't yun ang tinatap ko ito dapat okay I prefer my codes to be you know as clean as possible plus ls get rent ano pa yung isa so we have here plus backslash n uh, term so yung term natin dito ah mali <laughs> ito pala ayan plus ls that get term so far so good so yan yung magpiprint no yan so it will simply display the data uh, we will be calling the add pet fee method using the past least object and confirm that the fee explanation statement is displayed. Uh, this is possible by calling one, tapos add pet fee natin. Tatawagin natin yung add pet fee natin dito. And next, call the show values method. Lahat ng to for the least object again and confirm that the fee has been added to the rent. Okay. So paano natin to gagawin? Tawagin natin sila isa-isa, lahat. So, we have here show values. Tawagin natin si show values this time kay 1 naman. Uh, so, parang maulit to, no? Okay lang naman siguro. Yan. Show values 1. Show values 2. Show values 3. And show values 4. Okay. So far, we are good, I think. Diba? The two hold the values when you supplied as input and the one holds the default values. Okay. So, talaga maulit siya. Ayan. So, run, try natin i-run, no? Kung gagana na yung program natin. Let's run that. Enter tenant name. Uh, for the first tenant name is Naruto. Apartment number. Enter rent. Enter term. Tapos yung pangalawa naman, uh, Sasuke. Apartment number. Enter rent. Enter term. Tenant name. Apartment number. The rent. Uh, whatever the term na lalagay natin. 24 months. Ayan. So, tingnan natin yung result, no? We have Naruto, Sasuke, <laughs> we have Sakura, and the initial value. Okay? So, everything is actually perfectly fine and working. So, do you have any questions so far? Ayan, diba? Uh, take note, tinireview natin kung paano natin sinosolve yung mga problems natin dito. So, it's important for you guys to be very familiar with how I solve this. So, I suggest na i-copy and paste nyo yung parts ng code natin. Okay? So, importante po na na may copy kayo nitong code na to because this will actually serve as your written work dito sa module natin na to. Okay? So, kindly take a screenshot of this part para i-code nyo rin on your own. Uh, when I was a student, actually, my technique here is for me to code first the, or, you know, code the problem. Pero before ko siya totally i-code, gagawin ko muna yung mga UML diagrams ko, yung mga class diagrams ko. I-determine uh, ko muna yung mga given dun sa mismong problem natin. Saka ko siya ngayon i-code ng minsana. Okay? So, let's proceed with the third problem. So, for the third problem here, uh, we need to create a class named blood data that includes fields that hold the blood type. The four blood types are O, A, B, and A, B, and RH factor. Factors are 1 and a hyphen. So, create a default constructor that sets a field to O and 1 and an overloaded constructor. So, this time, our overloaded constructor type that requires values for both fields. So, include get and set methods for each field. Save this file. 
And as blood data, create an application named test blood data that demonstrates each method works correctly. So set, let's save the application as test blood data. So close natin to. Let's create another package named blood program. Ito na kita na dito. And inside the blood program, you have the blood data and test blood data. Okay. Yan. So gawin muna natin dito si blood data, no? Uh, lagay natin si package natin. Blood program, the package name. Okay. Public class. <clears throat> blood data. And let's actually add here a, a comment for the RH fact. Hindi, wag na lang. Huwag na natin i-comment to. I-proceed agad tayo dito kay private string blood type. Tapos si RH factor natin. So, RH factor. Yan. So, let's create here a constructor. Default constructor. Take note, default constructor. So, blood data. Public blood data. That actually sets the fields to 0 and 1. So, blood type is equivalent to O. And the RH factor is equivalent to plus. Hmm. Tapos meron ka ulit ditong overloaded constructor that requires values for both fields. So, meron kang panibagong constructor dito. An overloaded constructor. Dalawang beses. But then this time, you have a parameter. String B type, for example. Blood type. Baguhin ko lang. And string RH. Okay, blood data. We have here the blood type, the B type, RH factor. Oops, RH factor. We now get the value of RH. Tapos, si set get methods, diba? Include get set method for each field. So, public set blood type. Tama ba? Blood type. Set blood type. Okay. Tapos si public string get blood type. Return natin si blood type. So same din kay, kay, kay RH factor natin. Oops. RH factor. String. Ano pangalan na ito? RH. Nalimuta ko bigla. Tapos this dot RH factor. It's equal to RH. Ayan. Tapos si get method na lang natin ng public string get RH factor return RH factor. Got it? So, madali lang naman itong program na ito eh. Iaano lang natin. Uh, create an application name test blood data. That the method uh, actually works correctly. Alright, so let's proceed here sa main method natin, test blood data. For the main method, it's actually very easy. So we have a package, ano to, blood program. Tapos public class test blood data. Public static void main string args. There you go. Tapos tawagin natin si blood data. Let's name that as p1. Uh, let's call the default, default constructor the new blood data. The next is B2, pero this time we will be passing uh, values, which is A, tapos a hyphen. And tapos let's display B1. Okay. Uh, yung display natin dito, this is actually a method that will simply get and display. All of the values na pinanggalingan dito kay blood data na class natin. So we have here system without that print line. System without print line. The blood type is the blood type is n. Lagay natin dito ng b that get blood type then Eventually, the RH factor plus B that get RH factor. Oops. B that get RH factor. So, yun. Yun lang naman yung display niyan eh. 
So display one. Uh, next, let's display B two. So basically, you A and hyphen ang display niya naman dito. Tapos i overload natin. Kamiti natin si overloaded method natin for B one. We will set the blood type here, and I'll put AB. Tapos uh, set RH factor natin, which is hyphen once again. Tapos I display ulit natin si B1. Para mapakita lang natin na gumagana lahat ng methods natin. So that's actually it. And a very simple program, di ba? So this is actually the first one. Yung display B1. Ito. Uh, kinuha niya yung initial value or initial, yan, initial value ni constructor mo, which is 0. 0 plus. For the B2, display B2, you have A minus. Diba? For the display B1, once again, nagset tayo ng blood type. We overloaded the constructor. So, AB minus naman yun. So, that's it. Very easy, no? Napaka-simple program, pero at least uh, nagawa natin ng maayos. Now, for the fourth problem here, it's actually a different uh, problem. Hindi siya totally OOP, but rather, I will be using here another class, which is the local date class. Uh, in this case, we will try to calculate how many days are left until the first day of the next month. So, we'll be displaying the result, including the name of the next month. So, screenshot muna natin to, and let's proceed immediately with the fourth problem. Okay? Let's close natin yan. Let's create here a class days uh, till next month. Uh, since we will be using here a, of course, yung month natin, we need to import here the java.time na package natin. We will also need to use a scanner. Tapos public class days till next month public static void main string args now uh sa loob kasi nitong si java.time na to we have what we call the pakita ko lang ha si local yan local date na class si local date class this will actually automatically or this can actually call automatically calculate whatever things that we need related to time or related to month itself okay so, i-demo ko kung paano siya magamit. So, public class. Ayan. Public class till. Single L lang pala to. Okay. So, let's instantiate first the local date. So, local date. I'll name that as today. Tapos, using the now method inside the local date. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin... Kapag ka gumamit ka ngayon ng local date na class, ibig sabihin ginagamit mo lahat ng method sa loob ni local date class. So if I control click on this one, nandito yan eh, you know, so local date now, it will simply return the value of the default zone. That's actually the good thing about object oriented programming because once na marunong na kayong gumawa ng mga sarili niyong classes. For example, ito. Ito mga classes na to. Lahat ng to kasi predetermined na. Ibig sabihin may gumawa na nito. Diba? So you don't really need to recode the entire local date or to calculate the local date once again because everything is included in a single package already. And that's the power of OOP or object-oriented programming. Instead of us creating a lot of algorithms dito, minsanan na ang mangyayari dyan. Diba? So we have here int day. We have here days till next month let's simply print here the today today is tapos gamitin lang natin yung today na variable tinan natin run natin yan ayun diba today is March 17 2022 which is good diba and using the day kunin natin yung get day of the month oh, get day of month tapos I-print lang natin siya. Pakita ko lang sa inyo. Or demo ko lang. Para makita nyo yung power ngayon ni nito. This is day. Ayan. So, 17. Diba? Next. Uh, kunin natin si days. The, the days till the next month. For that case, 
may, meron ka, gaga, gagamitin mo yung date ngayon. Ayan, si length of month. Yung length of month natin is actually 30, no? 31 pala. 31 minus the day mismo. So, you have here 31 minus 17. Yun yung magiging magkakalculate niyan. So, so system.out.println uh, There are blank days till next month plus days until plus today plus months one that get month kunin natin yung month ngayon plus starts so basically nilagyan ko lang yan uh, ng plus months natin ibig sabihin March plus 1 is April diba? so run natin madali lang tong number 4 eh Ayun, di ba? There are 14 days until April starts. Take note, yung days till, days till next month variable natin, calculated the the length of month minus the day. Ayan. Tapos yung April, kaya nagpakita sa April is yung today plus month 1. Sabihin March plus 1 is April. Kukunin natin yung pangalan ng month na yun. And there you go. Very easy. Any questions so far? <laughs> Dali lang, no? Alright, so we are now in the fifth uh, problem here. This is an another problem na isasolve natin, no? Medyo, medyo challenging na to. Pahirap na ng pahirap. So, according here, we have a baseball game problem. Yan. So, create a class name baseball game that contains data fields for two teams and scores for each team in each of nine innings. So, Create get and set methods for each field. The get and set methods for the score should require a parameter that indicates which inning score is being assigned or retrieved. Do not allow an inning score to be set if all the previous innings have not already been set. If a user attempts to set an inning that is not yet available, is an error message. So, madali lang naman to. It will also include the method that determines the winner of the game after scores for the last inning have been entered. Now, for this exercise, assume that the game might end in a tie. So, create two subclasses from baseball game, high school baseball game, ito, and little league baseball game, and high school baseball games have seven innings, and little leagues have game have six innings. So, ensure that the scores for later innings cannot be accessed for objects of these subtypes. Write three applications that each instantiate one of the object types and demonstrate their method. So, you have here three. Baseball game, high school baseball game, and little league baseball game. So, you have three demo as well. So, meron yung demo baseball game pang dito. Demo high school pang dito. Demo little league pang dito naman. So, we have three different classes with three different main methods. So, that's challenging. Diba? So, gawa tayo ng package dito named baseball. Let's close this one. And I think we need a bigger screen. So, first of all, let's create here the baseball game. Okay. Si baseball game naman na, na method natin. Okay. So, gawa tayo dito ng baseball Java class. This is baseball game method. Now, for the baseball game method, we have another class which is uh, gawin natin mamaya siguro. Diba? Mamaya na lang yung, yung pang demo. Ito yung demo. So, for now, ito muna, si public class baseball game. According here, uh, you will need to, you know, contains data fields for two teams. So, kung two teams yan, gagamit tayo ng array for the teams. And, I mean, for the score. Yan. Tapos, kasi diba, you have you have two teams tapos per team has a score so kailangan mo ng pag istoran niyan ng dalawang beses so instead of us using a variable medyo mag overflow kasi yan gamit na lang tayo ng two array two dimensional array big sabihin ng two dimensional array uh, two particular array values can now be stored at the same time and can be accessed using their coordinates, 0100201, and so on. So, paka-explain ko sa inyo yan mamaya. So, create tayo dito ng variable na private string. This is a single array. This is for the team. T 
team names array. So, with a value of 2. Dalawa lang naman yan eh. Okay. And a protected int to the array. Kung saan natin lalagay si scores array natin. Now, uh, according here as well, may get set methods tayo. Tapos meron tayo ditong scores, get set methods for scores. Should require a parameter that indicates which inning score. Okay. So, gawa muna tayo dito ng constructor. Public baseball game. Ayan. Let's use the scores array. I-store natin kasi dito eh. Yung lahat ng magiging scoring natin. So, yan. So, scores array. May nakalimutan ako dito. Int A and B. Now, uh, initially, the scores here, tignan natin ha. Yung initial scores dito, wala pa, wala pa namang nakalagay, no? So, you have here the score as 2 and 9. As their address. Now, for every scores na dadaanan yan, okay? For every scores na dadaanan yan, i-access natin yan. Uh, less than or equal to 1, A++, plus plus, another for loop for the B, equal 0, B less than 9, B++ plus plus. and dito natin i-store lahat ng values mamaya. Okay? So, baseball game. Now, let's create here the, the demo. Yung demo baseball game.java natin. For the demo that baseball game.java this is also somehow uh, easy yung, yung pagdating natin dito sa may main method natin. Uh, this will simply instantiate the object of baseball game. And at the same time, we will be demonstrating their methods as well. So, tignan natin. Demo baseball game, package baseball. We have here uh, public static void, public static void main string args. We have a scanner. Gawa tayo dito ng scanner. Import java.util.scanner. Gamit tayo ng scanner. Let's use input. This time, new scanner system.in. Okay. So, let's actually count. Tapos, gamitin natin, instantiate natin si baseball game dito. So, baseball game, I'll name that as baseball game as small with new baseball game. So, instantiated that object. So, in this case, we will now be entering. And please enter the name of the first team. Ganyan. Diba? So, using the baseball game, uh, we will actually be setting the the team names natin. So, meron tayo dito ng data field for the team names array. So, set team names array tatawagin natin yan with a0 tapos yung input that next line natin so dito natin i-store yan mamaya okay so dyan natin i-store yan so therefore may kulang pa sa program natin i-gawin na natin tong si set team <laughs> di ba set team name array natin asan ba to create get set method for each field okay So, we have, of course, public string. Medyo mahirap tong problem na to, actually. Public string, uh, get team name. So, we have the name of the team. Later on, tapos we will be returning. Uh, ano ba yung i-return natin? Yung pangalan ni team later on. Okay. So, may error pa yung word natin or yung yung team natin na na data type or I mean na, na variable. Kasi hindi pa natin siya totally na gagamit, di ba? So, eh, dito pala. Sorry. Ayan. So, we will be returning the team. Kahit ako na, 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 na wala doon na. Sorry. Public set team names array. Ayan. So, 
Ano ang magiging parameter ni team names array? We have here the team name. Ayan. Tapos si name mismo nung team natin. And for this one, we will actually be setting the team names array as the team. Lalagay natin dyan. Calls name. Ayan. So, after nating enter yung pangalan ni name dito, lalagay na ngayon natin dito yan. So, nawala na error dito, no? Uh, gamit, gawin din natin si score. Meron na ba tayong score? Actually, wala pa. Pero ito yun, scores array naman. For the scores array, meron tayong public void set scores array. Ayan. With the following parameters. The team, the position, and the score. And we should have here the the get score as well. Public in get score. And in team, in position. And since this is a 2D array, balik natin yung dalawang array natin dito, which is the team and the position of the team itself. Ayan. So, we will actually assume na ano sila, no? Sabi dito, assume natin na pantay na sila. Tapos kapag ka, si user nag-attempt ng ining na hindi available, error message. Mamaya natin gagawin yan. So, tuloy natin dito si demo baseball game naman. Si main method natin. Okay. Now, for the main method here, since we actually added or called or instantiated the baseball game method, gawin natin si, gawa tayo ng while natin dito. While the count or the team is not or less than 9, print tayo dito ng system.out print line, which is yung score naman. Please enter the score of <laughs> of team 1 for the inning inning number tapos yung initial inning number natin which is of course mag start yan sa 1 diba? eh, ang value ni count is 0 so mag start tayo sa 1 inning number 1 plus ok so ganyan now I would like to call the baseball game that set scores array naman set natin yung score ni array with the following parameter set scores array is team the number the num the team itself the position and the input that next int itself yung ito okay so far so good input that next line Next int, then input that next line. Tayo dito. Yung nakuha nating value natin dito. And let's add a value to count. So magiging uh, team 1 for the inning number 2, inning number 3, inning number 4, inning number 5. Paulit-ulit ka mag enter ng, ng value. Next, for the score array, dito tayo ngayon magkakaroon ng, ng if condition. And for the set score array. So, you have here, position. Wait lang ha. You have, if the position is equal to 0 or at the same time, yung position is less than the scores array and which is the team that length yung length ng team mo and at the same time, so meron kang dalawang condition dyan eh. Si score array mo, which is team, position minus 1, is not equal to 999. Ito, nandito yan. Not equal to 999. So, ibig sabihin, habang tuloy, yung scores array natin, with the team, with the position, and score. Kunin natin yung score niyan. And if that's the case, yung scores array ulit natin with a value of 0. I mean position of 0. And scores array natin. 
the value of 0 dot length medyo complicated na to no? minus 1 not equal to 999 at the same time ah kulang pa pala to and scores array pagka pumantay ibig sabihin okay scores array 1 with the length of the array minus 1 not equal to 999 as well so if that's the case calculate natin si score na calculate score and if scores array the position of 0 0 0 is not equal to 999 saka magkakalculate yung score niya length minus 1 yan which is good or position or hmm <clears throat> parang may ko lang ha hindi tama naman na ito siguro ano bang sabi dito Do not allow an inning score to be set if all the previous innings have already been dito na yun. If a user attempts to set an inner innings that is not yet available, issue an error message. Ah, okay. So, ito yun. We have an else statement here. That print line. Error. You need to set all previous innings. set all previous innings. Ayan. I'm actually confident na tama tong algorithm na ginagawa ko dito. No? So, also include a method that determines the winner. winner. Pero yung score muna. Ayan, yung, yung score muna. You have another method here. Public void calculate score in which we'll simply calculate the score itself. So, we have the team one equal 0 and you have team 2 equals to 0 and for every team for every team score and scores array to 0 team 1 plus a score lagay natin yung score ngayon kay team 1 and for every score ni team 2 scores array position 1 store natin dyan team 2 plus equals score and if the team 1 is greater than team 2 ibig sabihin panalo yan System that out that print line team one wins. Otherwise, else if tayo ulit dito, if team two actually won greater than the team one, kasi nga nanalo sila. System that out that print line team two wins. And otherwise, tie sila. It was a tie. Okay, so going back to the demo baseball game. Ayan na yung calculate score, no? Baka nandito na siya. Calculate score natin. Okay na, sure ball. Uh, let's try to proceed here. Dito naman. Let's in in initialize once again the count value. This time, yung second team naman. Now, please enter the name of the second team. Okay. Uh, let's also instantiate set team names array. Pero this time, ilalagay ko siya ngayon kay next line. Kanina zero, no? So, ito one na. So, team names array. So, zero the pangalawang position niya na is yung 1 which is okay good while the count is great, less than 9 what will happen ganun din kopyahin din na eh, kopyahin na rin natin to system.out.printline please enter the score of team 2 
for the inning number, count number one, ganyan. And let's store that to set scores, dun sa, sa scores naman. This time kay 1, kanina kasi in-store natin siya kay ano eh, kay 0. Store natin to kay team 0. Sabihin si team 0 nandito. Team 0 is team 1. Team 1 is team 2. So, the team. Okay, 1. Tapos yung count niya. Uh, input dot next int. Tapos input dot next line. Whoa! Dalawa na, no? Magiging, magiging ano yan, dalawang ano. Yan. Uh, Naruto team. Tapos, ah, uh, hindi. Please enter the score. Inning number one, ten. Ah, hindi. You need to set all the previous innings, Pabla. Sige, ulitin natin. So, may error na, no? Naruto. You need to set all previous innings. So, napupunta agad siya dito kay kay error. So, ibig sabihin may mali tayo dito sa may, sa may if condition natin. So, let's try to at least check and see kung saan tayo nagkamali dito. Yan natin yan. Ayusin natin ng konti. Ah, uh, ayusin ko ulit ha. Wait lang. This should be end eh. So, dito yan. And they should be here. Uh huh. Calculate score. And I'm pretty sure this is the right one. Hindi, wag ko na lang lagyan ng spacing, no? Para hindi tayo malito. So, 2. And although mas maliit nga lang yung kalalabasan niya. So, 2 if statements. if statements nested if statement perhaps and another if statement here inside with a calculate score ah doon ako nagkamali kanina kasi dalaw dalawang if statement dito. so dapat ano sa loob pala ito okay so kaya siya pumapasok lagi dito run natin yan pero na may mali ako doon eh Oh, Naruto. Yan. Working. Innings number 4. Innings number 6. Innings number 7. Innings number 8. Innings number 9. Ito naman. 1, 2, 3, 4. Sino man nanalo? Si Sasuke. Ah, may mali rin ako dito. Oh. Hindi umaandar yung... Yung for loop natin. So, inning number one lagi. Ibig sabihin, may mali ulit tayo dito sa my demo baseball game natin. So, I have forgotten here the iteration which is count plus plus. And that's it. <laughs> it looks complicated, right? So, ganyan talaga. This should be Naruto. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Sasuke. Okay, team one wins, diba? So that's actually the 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 solution for the demo baseball game. But then, ang sabi dito, may three applications ka pa. So may pang pang high school. Iba kasi ang style ni high school, diba? Iba rin si ang style ni little league. So gawin natin ngayon si si high school naman. Si high school, we can just simply use all of this. Etong nakikita nyo ngayon dito. Etong pinaka parent class natin. We can simply reuse that. Uh, this is high school baseball game. We can just simply reuse that by inheriting the baseball game itself. Para hindi ka na paulit-ulit, di ba? So, ang gagawin mo lang dito is constructor na lang. High school baseball game. Which is, titignan mo ngayon yung hindi na siya 2x9 but rather 2x7 na. Ibig sabihin, 2 teams with 9 innings. Ito, 2 teams with 7 innings na siya. Okay, so scores are gamitin natin. It's equal to new int. Ayan, 2 
Tapos 7. Mas madali na itong pangalawa eh. So, ito. Titignan niya ngayon yung scoring per ano. So, panibago ko ulit for loop dito. For B is equal to 0. B pag i mo lang naman ng values yan eh. B++. Oops. This should be array. Score is array. A and B. Equals 999. That's the maximum scores na pwede mong ilagay. Take note. This should be here. Hindi. Dito na lang ta. Tanggalin ko ta. High school baseball game. So, I think this is it for the high school baseball game. Kasi hanggang 7 innings lang eh. Si, for the demo naman, actually same lang din. Uh, same lang din yung demo. But then, nag, magkakaiba lang yan dito sa my count natin. So, gawa tayo dito ng project. And Java class, demo, HS, baseball game. Uh, the only difference of that one is, of course, same lang dito. Copy ko to. Tapos baguhin lang natin. Gagawin lang natin siyang uh, 7. Okay? So gagawin lang natin siyang 7. So wait lang. Copy ko lang. Import java.util That scanner. There you go. So, you have here, sa team names, Ari. Pero I think I have forgotten something. Demo. Baseball game. Uh, ito, ang instantiate natin dito is, tama, baseball game pa rin. System.out.println. Ayan, public class. Pero, we don't have here, public static void mean string args I lapag ko muna to dito ha para mas makita nyo Tapos itong lahat ng to lalagay natin dito Kung napansin nyo yung count ngayon dito is 7 na lang Ayan, 7 na lang yung count natin Kanina 9 So kasi sinet natin yung dito as 2 teams with 7 innings so, kung papaganahin natin yan, same, same lang din, di ba? Same lang din yan. Lastly, we have here the Little Leagues. For the Little, le little Leagues, uh, very easy lang din yan, actually. Pwede na, na, pwede na nga rin natin to i-copy. Eh. So, Little League Baseball Game. In this game, lagay na lang natin yan dito. And copy ko na lang yun dito. So, same lang. Pero this time, 6 innings lang sila. Okay? Tapos, kapag kagagawa ka ngayon ng... Paggagawa ka ngayon ng panibagong main method, kay, kay demo... I mean, demo niya ng... Demo LL Baseball Game. Ayan. You can just simply copy and paste everything. Diba? ba? Copy and paste mo lang to. Lagay mo dito. And everything should be fine already. Java util, pero meron tayong error. Tingnan ko kung ano yung error ko. Wait lang ha, may error tayo dito. Mm -hmm. Public static void main. Ah, ito. Okay. So, look. Everything is working perfectly fine. Meron kang tatlo. Yeah. So, this is... We have three different demo. And we have here the parent class, baseball game. You have the two leagues, the high school and the little leagues. And you have three different main method for each of that one. So, pwede nyo na po siyang i-copy-paste. 
Pero I hope makita pa rin, no? On your end. And so that's how that's how object oriented programming works in problem number five. Question so far. Screenshot? Sige, screenshot nyo lang. Mahaba-haba yung code. Okay, sige. Continue natin. 